Oh, his name is above, his name is above depression. His name is above loneliness. Oh, his name is above disease. His name is above cancer. His name is above every other name. Jesus. And that is who you are. Oh, I know that is who you are. Amen, amen, amen. child sit down at my feet you're so tired of trying to be everything that everybody wants you to be I know I know so why am I running from the one I need the most I keep running Going back to what I know Why am I running From the one I need the most I keep running, running Whoa. 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 It's just like me to fall back in my ways Trying to find love in all the wrong places yeah. It's not easy to see Being who I am is who you want me to be I know oh. So why am I running From the one I need the most I keep running Going back to what I know Why am I running From the one I need the most I keep running, running Yeah I'm not doing the things that I wanna Giving up on the man I'm becoming I don't know why I don't know why I am scared to death if I'm honest I'm just a kid in my heart with a question Do I belong? Cause I wanna belong So why am I running From the one I need the most I keep running Yeah, Going back to what I know Why am I running from the one I need the most? I keep a running, running. I keep a running, running. Why am I running, running? Why am I running? child sit down at my feet Gives them that he lives in you today. 
Rock of ages, bread of him, all the victory you have given, all my sin and all my shame, now redeemed in Jesus' name. Here I raise my hands and sing to my Savior, to my King. Hey, hey, VAC, it's the last weekend of October and we're so excited you're spending some of it with us. My name is Kim and I love getting to give you a little peek into what's happening around VAC each week. So, whether this is your first time with us or you've been around for a while, let's talk about a few of the things coming up as we approach November. And here's a favorite reminder, fall back. Get ready for that sleep schedule to change because next weekend, is the time change. Enjoy that extra hour of sleep, but don't forget to change those clocks back. And uh, hey, weekend team, this goes for us too. Someone maybe make sure to remind me. Okay, maybe I'll just take a second and uh, do that right now. Uh, anyways, young adults, this one is for you. We have some great news. YA is back. Every Tuesday starting next week on November 2nd, come to Roots at 7 p.m. for a chill and laid back evening of socializing, study, prayer, and connection. This is a great opportunity to meet other young adults from VAC. So bring a friend this coming Tuesday and follow VAC Young Adults on social media to stay in the know about everything that's coming up this year. Are you interested in membership or curious about what it means to be a member of VAC? 
Then mark down our upcoming membership conversation in your calendar. Join us in the Arbor for this casual evening on Monday, November 15th at 7 p.m. And there's no need to sign up, just show up. And if you want to do a little light reading of our membership manual ahead of time, just connect with Will. Each week, we talk about getting connected, filling out connection cards, checking out our website. We know, you hear that a lot. But in a church community our size, it can be easy to feel disconnected, and we are passionate about not letting that happen. We are definitely better together, and doing life with others is vital. So if you're wanting to find out more or get involved in everything BAC has to offer, we've made it easy for you. And yet, yeah, here it is. Just fill out a connection card found in the pews or on our website. We'll connect and help you take those next steps. These next steps and connections can happen through many of our weekly events, community outreach programs, international missions work, and many other ways. And your giving helps provide each and every one of these opportunities, along with practical and spiritual support to our local and global communities. Up on our screen, you'll see all the ways you can partner with us through your giving, including our traditional giving boxes located by the sanctuary doors. Thank you for your continuous generosity. So no matter where you are or where you come from, whether you're in your living room or seated in our sanctuary, we hope you will feel a sense of home here at VAC. Welcome. It is so great to see you. Well, good morning, Vernon Alliance Church. And uh, to those of you who are gathered with us at home or uh, in a coffee shop, wherever you are, uh, again, uh, thank you for joining us. We're glad uh, that you're with us today. Uh, I trust that all of you have been able to enjoy uh, what I consider to be a fabulous Alberta fall weather weekend, getting outside, getting out of, out of the clouds, and uh, we're glad that you're also taking some time from that to engage with the body of Christ and uh, to celebrate the goodness of our God today. Uh, just a little housekeeping thing, we're all uh, tired of uh, continuous talk about COVID and safety. Just want to continue to remind uh, you to honor one another, uh, do your best on hygiene as you're coming here. We encourage you to wear a mask as you come. Uh, just continue uh, to, to invite you to uh, all of us coming from different places, uh, different things in our weeks, and uh, please uh, just continue to respect one another that way as we keep each other safe and healthy these days. Um, we are uh, going to do something unique and special today, and that is to uh, recognize and celebrate uh, God's faithfulness and calling on uh, someone who is part of this church family for a long time, and that's uh, John Biller, the guy I'm standing in front of right now. Uh, those of you who've been part of this church family know who John is. I did have someone yesterday say, who is he again? <laughs> uh, John uh, served for many years as the worship pastor uh, here and has remained in the community and uh, served the church more broadly speaking, particularly in the area of worship. Um, speaking of that, he's got a lot of things going on uh, these days. Uh, he's got a new album uh, that he has just dropped really recently. Uh, he's also launched a Kickstarter campaign to see some of the funding and to make uh, that and another upcoming album possible. Uh, he has uh, launched a new kind of ministry called Worship Arts Canada. And I've also heard that he's working on a line of stretchy pants with Lululemon that is also <laughs> coming up. So uh, you, you can find out about those initiatives and others by going to johnbowler.com. And John would love it if you would uh, come and go and check out his site and just find out a little bit about what's going on there. Uh, to help celebrate uh, John's ordination and uh, just to take us through some of the formalities, I want to invite a couple uh, friends to come and join me on the platform. Uh, this is Mark Peters and Dwayne Taves. Both of them serve uh, in the leadership of Alliance Churches in the province of British Columbia. Uh, Mark, as our new district superintendent, he began in August. Uh, and uh, Dwayne's been around for a little longer, but no stranger to churches in BC. So they're here to celebrate John's ordination, and uh, Mark will be teaching us a little bit uh, later on. wonder if you could just give them a warm Vernon welcome today.
with that, I think we want to get our focus on Jesus. So, uh, John, call us, uh, call us to worship here. Thanks, Jason. Well, I haven't said this for a while, but good morning, church. It's good to be here. Let's, uh, let's call ourselves to worship, and uh, we'll do that with Revelation chapter 5. Uh, in this chapter of the Bible, John is describing an incredible, a, a fairly epic experience of heavenly worship. He describes Jesus as the Lion of Judah, the, the one and only one worth, worthy of our uh, praise and to open the scroll. And he also, we, we read about Jesus as the Lamb who was slain, and he writes, writes it this way. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying, to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. So this scene, this scene is not a moment in time. This scene is all the time. And what we do this morning is we just join in. We join in that eternal worship service that's always happening to the Lion of Judah, the Lamb who was slain for us. Amen? So let's worship together. Why don't you stand up?
Faithful God, amen. He is faithful and he will continue to be faithful, and so we sing. Do it again, Lord. Do it again. Show your faithfulness. Here we go. Walking around these walls. I thought by now.
say amen praise the lord church well good morning vernon alliance church it that's a fantastic response let, let me let me just say this traveling around to many of our churches uh in our province we have 82 alliance churches across the province of bc it just does my heart so good to be able to worship with god's people and uh this, this morning, last night, is, is no exception. Um, it's just an honor to be here. And to be able to celebrate today with you on, on, a, on an exciting day. Uh, again, my name is Dwayne Taves. I'm one of our assistant district superintendents. And I, I oversee an area called leader development. And so I get to work with pastors who are exploring the call to pastoral ministry all the way through to five, six years, maybe longer, in a pastor's uh, um, journey in, in ministry. And so I get to visit a lot of churches. I get to walk with a lot of pastors. And being able to walk and work and minister with John for a number of years, uh, today is an exciting day for you and for me and for us in the district family as we talk about ordination for a few minutes. Because for just a few minutes, we have, to, we have the privilege of doing something that we don't do very often. We get to connect God's redemptive work in the world to the role of pastor. We get to connect for just a few minutes uh, God's desire to restore what is broken to the role of pastor in particular, John Buller. You see, uh, we know that God created the world good. And we as humankind, we, we did a pretty good job of messing that up. And at the heart of God's redemptive work is something called the incarnation, the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And if you're familiar with the biblical narrative, you know that after the resurrection of Jesus, he ascends to be with his Father in heaven, and we read in Acts chapter 2 that shortly thereafter, the Holy Spirit is given, is poured out upon God's people, and really in that moment, the church is divinely created. And as you read uh, a number of the, uh, the New Testament authors, the, the epistles, Paul's letters, you, you, you understand that we can't, as men and women, lead the church and proclaim the gospel the way we need to on our own. And so God gives gifts to those that he's called. And in Ephesians chapter 4, we read that some are called to be apostles, some are called to be pastors, some are called to be prophets, some are called to be teachers. And the longer that I've been in this role uh, and, and the more that I've traveled around and had the privilege of meeting men and women in pastoral ministry, the more I understand that there are prophets who have an incredible teaching gift. There are apostles who, who are amazing shepherds. God gives gifts to those he calls the way he sees fit, which leads us to today, ordination. How many of you have been part of an ordination service before? Wow, must have had a lot of people ordained here at Vernon Alliance Church. That's fantastic. Um, so here's, here's what ordination is as defined by the Christian and Missionary Alliance in Canada. Ordination is the affirmation by the body of Christ. That's you. Those who call Vernon Alliance home. Those who have sat under John's teaching in word and in song for years and years. It is the affirmation by the body of Christ that the one being ordained, that's John, is set apart and called by God to gospel ministry. You, you see something in him. 
You've experienced God moving in and through him, his spirit moving in and through him as he served you so well for so many years. But these giftings and callings have also been affirmed by our licensing and ordination committee, of which I chair in our province. They have been affirmed by our district superintendent, Mark Peters. They have been affirmed by the leadership here at Vernon Alliance Church. They've been affirmed by, by church leadership in many churches across our country. And uh, it is just an honor to be able to ordain John today. And before we do that, I, I think it might be helpful for just a couple of minutes to, to, to address the question, well, what is it that John did? Why, why is this a big deal? Maybe some of you who, who connect with John on a regular basis, as he was going through his ordination journey, you're saying, well, he doesn't respond to emails the same way he used to, or he just seems like he's a little more distant than maybe he has been in the past. Well, John had to complete 18 assignments, uh, eight, eight book reports, uh, four major papers he needed to write. He needed to preach four sermons, and it's daunting enough standing in front of a congregation and preaching God's word, let alone knowing that you're going to submit your manuscript to a group of people that are going to mark it uh, later on. So John did that, and after that was done, John came before the Licensing and Ordination Committee uh, for a, an ordination interview of which I chaired. And we had about a two-hour conversation with John about theology, about what he believed. And, and our desire in those uh, interviews is not that a candidate can simply recite answers to us. Lots of people can do that. But we want to know that theology has moved from head to heart. And as a committee we unanimously affirmed the gifting and the calling in John as he was able to articulate what it is that God had put into his mind and what was coming out of his heart as he leads you, as he leads those whom he works with on a regular basis. And so John passed that interview with excellence, with excellence. And I get asked the question so often as, as I travel around, you know, how, how are our pastors doing? How's the church doing? And being able to walk alongside of leaders like John Buller, I can say with certainty, the church is in good hands. The church is in good hands. And so it's an absolute honor to be here today. And I want to invite John and Sandra to come and join me up on the stage for a minute. And for just a couple of minutes, I want to have a, a conversation with them. But I want you to listen. Because again, this is about the affirmation by the body of Christ, you, in the gifting and callings of John. And so I just want to have a conversation with you two for just a, a couple of minutes. And I, I want to read some scripture to you from Paul found in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Verses 1 through 5, it says this. This then is how you ought to regard us, as servants of Christ and as those who are entrusted with the mysteries that God has revealed. Now it's required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. Paul says, I care very little if I'm judged by you or by any other human court. Indeed, I don't even judge myself. My conscience is clear, but that doesn't make me innocent because it's the Lord who judges me. Therefore, judge nothing before the appointed time. Wait until the Lord comes because he will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of the heart. And at that time, each will receive their praise from God. John, you have been entrusted with a calling what it says in verses 1 and 2. You have been given gifts. And God's gracious invitation to you, your duty is to fulfill that trust. Your duty is to fulfill that trust. You are a steward of your giftings and your callings. And as I study the word steward, the, the primary attribute in stewardship is faithfulness. Be faithful to the gifts and the callings that God has implanted in you. Um, and I know you both know this, but I'll say it anyway. You don't have to do this alone. All of heaven's resources are at your disposal. He wants to walk with you. Because ministry, as you know, is hard. It's hard. And, and it's really hard right now. All of heaven's resources are at, your, are at your disposal. So work hard, but don't worship your work. Don't worship your work. Um, Love and serve your wife, Sandra. And in doing so, yeah. <laughs> there's lots of amens and hand claps, and yeah, for sure. Love and serve your wife, and in doing so, you model to those that you lead 
Christ's love for them and for the bride. So lead well in that aspect. Your family, your kids need dad, no matter how old they are, fully engaged. So engage well. Um, Grow in skill. Keep learning new chords. Do whatever you need to do. Keep learning, but understand that Holy Spirit anointing is way more important than any skill that you can learn. Holy Spirit anointing is so important. Preach and teach the word of God not the word of John, as you write new songs, as you, as you preach, as you teach, as you lead, lean into the word. Keep studying the book. Ordination isn't the end of a journey. It's, it's really the beginning of a journey. And then as you move to verses three and four, you're charged with keeping a clear conscience. Um, cultivate a listening ear to the voice of the Spirit. What's he saying? Where is he calling you? Where is he asking you to lean in? That's my challenge to you. I mean, John, it is an honor it is a privilege. I, I've waited for this day for you for a long time, for a long time, uh, to be able to stand here and affirm that God has great things in store for the two of you. Uh, it is an absolute honor to be able to uh, oversee this today. And so I bless you, and I congratulate you. And, and to make this official, and I know I should have had this with me, but it's over here. So John, on, on behalf of the Christian Missionary Alliance in Canada. It is my pleasure to be able to give you your certificate of ordination and actually announce, maybe for the very first time, that you are officially Reverend John Buller. There you go. I love you, buddy. Congratulations, man. Congratulations. Wow. Good that. At this time, I want to invite Jason and, and the elders to come and join me up on the stage, and, and we just want to have a time of prayer for John and for Sandra. John and Sandra, if you want to stand there, that will allow us to uh, circle up around you. Um, uh, the Bullers uh, have, uh, are, as I've already said, are well-known members of, of this family for a long time, uh, and John, uh, perhaps the understanding of your call to ministry and uh, the uh, greater use of uh, and the development of your gifts have happened in lots of churches, uh, in Western Canada especially, but there is no church, definitively we can say that, that your gifts have not been honed and developed and put to use more than Vernon Alliance Church. And uh, so, of course, uh, we're uh, so glad to be part of the Christian Missionary Alliance who uh, gives you these credentials um, but we would also say that uh, th they are simply affirming what we already knew for a long time as a church family, that God's called you uh, to lead the church. And so we uh, recognize that today, and we want to say, uh, keep doing your job, keep fulfilling your calling, and the evidence that you are doing that well is uh, that more and more people uh, are brought to an understanding of who Jesus is and elevate him. And uh, so we want to see more and more of that happen as you continue to lead in ministry, minister in various ways in the future. So uh, it's my uh, privilege uh, on behalf of the church family to pray for you. Uh, I'm going to ask Gary as well uh, to pray uh, and uh, offer God's blessing. Uh, I also, uh, I should need, Mark, can you grab my phone? One of our elders who couldn't be here this morning, uh, Roy Bowman, also wanted to, me to like start off a prayer for you that way. And uh, seeing as we're doing this as a church, why don't you stand and join us? I'll warn you, you're going to have to stand for just a couple minutes, but it'll be a bit of a leg stretch as well as we're praying. So from Roy, John, may you continue to grow in the knowledge and majesty of Christ our Lord through the power of his word and through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And Father, we... Um, we uh, have these processes, uh, these credentials that we offer people, um, but really they're a recognition of what you're doing behind the scenes and what you've been doing in your church all along, and that's calling and gifting and empowering people uh, to collaborate with you for the restoration of the world, and that all people might know that Jesus Christ is Lord. And uh, we recognize the way uh, that uh, John has drawn attention to Jesus for many, many years here in our city and across our country. And uh, we affirm those giftings in him, uh, and we ask that you would continue to fan into flame uh, the gift that you have given him, not for his glory, 
not so that his music could be known more and more, uh, but so that people would know how amazing and great and worthy you are. And uh, so we just uh, ask your spirit's filling for him for the next leg of the journey and ask that you would use him for blessing around the world. Psalm 138. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and will praise your name for your love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. When I called you, answered me. You made me bold and stout-hearted. May all the kings of the earth praise you, O God. When they hear the words of your mouth, may they sing of the ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. Though the Lord is on high, he looks upon the lowly, but the proud he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes. With your right hand, you save me. The Lord will fulfill his purposes for me. Your love, O Lord, endures forever. Our Father, may the stories of yesterday that carry your message propel John by hope into your miracle of today. And as the miracle of today moves into the mystery of tomorrow, I pray that these stories would give John the conviction of your love for him to overflowing, and then from overflowing into expression through words and music that you have so uniquely gifted, gifted him with. And again, as we in turn listen and engage as your people in this expression of word and song, that our hearts and our souls and our minds would yield in praise to you. In times of discouragement, may John hide in the shadow of your wings. May you surround him with angels to protect him. May your spirit continue to dwell in him, and may he rest in the knowledge that you go before him. Thank you for these moments in time that inspire us to express our love for you and to you. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Jesus, we, uh, we recognize that you are the one who works out your purposes in all of our lives. And we thank you for John and for Sandra and their service to you in all of the places that you've led him, them, through all these years. And we thank you that you are the one who have given them the gifts. You've given John the gift of, of music and, and the ability to, to teach and to lead through music. And we just ask, God, that you would continue to open up doors, uh, new opportunities to proclaim your name. God, we ask that you would place a hedge of protection around them as a family, uh, that the enemy wouldn't be able to stop what it is that you are working out in them. And I, I just pray for, for a boldness in, in John to be able to proclaim your name in this community and really around the world. And so, God, we, we stand in agreement that you are, you are doing great things in and through them as a family, in and through John as a leader, and we continue to ask that you would work out your purposes in their lives. And again, we say to God be the glory. And all God's people said, amen, amen. amen. You may be seated. so much i know some of there, there are some people here and maybe watching online that are whispering to the person who is this guy again i don't feel like we should know him um and so uh i'm john <laughs> and i used to work here uh for about 12 years and some amazing god-blessed memories of worship that uh, i have in this place 
so this is really special for me to be able to do this here. And thank you. And um, if you'll allow me just a, a couple of words, of, a few words of thanks. Um, my, my super cool niece, Allison, and my mom made the trip from Winnipeg uh, to be here today. And so, hi, mom, and welcome here. And we should, we should uh, do that. I'm sure that my dad is watching online as well. And mom and dad um, suffered through earlier versions of my music and ministry efforts, which were uh, much louder and more annoying probably than, uh, than they are now, hopefully. Um, she made a pretty good show of it when she passed me off to Sandra some years ago, after about 25 years or so of having me in the house. And she made it seem like she was kind of sad and stuff, but I think maybe she's a little bit relieved. Someone else could take care of me, because uh, I'm not always um, uh, necessarily bright and shiny, right? But um, there's many people that I would thank individually, but then this would sound like a little bit more like a Grammy uh, acceptance speech or something. So I'll just connect with those people personally if I haven't um, already done that. And uh, I'd like to acknowledge the role that this church has had in uh, this journey in affirming. And thank you, Dwayne, for just so excellently explaining and helping us to understand uh, the body of Christ, the church as the body. And um, in affirming and encouraging uh, the ministry journey that I have had, um, m most of which, uh, in this sense, the pastoral uh, ordination sense uh, happened here, right? And so thank you to all of you. Um, the significance of that cannot be overstated. Um, it makes me emotional, and words don't sufficiently uh, do justice in communicating that, but um, I just got to try. Uh, so that includes all of you. That also includes all the past and current leadership at, at Vernon Alliance and the staff, past and current staff at Vernon Alliance Church. Uh, including Jason. We had lunch a couple of times uh, over the last few months. Uh, at one point, I wondered aloud about uh, doing this, and um, he, he graciously uh, agreed to, and it, it seemed to me like he was all for it. Jason, I just really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I have a couple friends here, Dwayne and Mark. You're going to see Mark in a little bit. He's, he's not an unknown entity to us. Um, and so you probably recognize him, uh, but, you know, as friends, guys, Dwayne and Mark, it's huge that you're here. Um, as ministers and speaking as a minister under your care and uh, your leadership, um, I just want to say that this is very spiritually significant. And so I, uh, I accept the charge and thank you. And I don't do that alone. I do that with Sandra, my family, my daughter Cassidy, my son Jackson. And um, yeah, uh, I receive that. And I receive that affirmation. And uh, I hope that I can be worthy of that. But I realize, and you probably do too, that we are not. I am not. We are not. But that's kind of the whole point, isn't it? That Jesus justifies and reconciles us to the Father, and he calls us, and he makes us worthy. And so the Lord rejoices uh, in these kinds of moments. And how else can we respond uh, other than to worship, right? Amen? So, so why, don't we, why don't we do that? Um, and I will gather my emotions. So this is a, just a lovely song. I, I got to record this recently, and it, it's such a special song for me. So uh, me and my friends here will uh, sing for you and hopefully with you. And there's a little curveball in the, co in the uh, bridge. So uh, just a uh, heads up on that. It's a little different. <coughs> you, Lord. 
Oh, your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God I love you, Lord Oh, your mercy Have a seat. I've known John for about 15 years now, and, and we are friends. <laughs> we are friends. But John, I just want to, in 
in consultation with this whole community here, I, I just want to affirm God's call on your life as pastor. But beyond that, I want to affirm God's call on your life as a prophetic voice across Canada. And I also want to affirm God's call on your life to be an artist. John is an artist. We all know this, right? John, as you create, you reflect the beauty and the image of the one who's created everything. So we bless you with creativity. Continue, my friend. I have known Jason even longer than I've known John. In fact, Jason and I got our start in 1997. He was in Cochrane, I was in Calgary. And so Jason, I just wanna take this moment publicly to affirm your calling as a leader, as a preacher, and as a pastor. I'm thrilled that you are here at Vernon Alliance Church. May God give you wisdom and strength and a heart of love for this community, church community, and the wider city of Vernon. The Lord bless you. It's a privilege to have a few brief minutes just to share a reflection on what it means to move all in when it comes to the Lord Jesus Christ. I think all of us can agree that we live in incredibly turbulent times. All of us have heard, we've seen, we've felt the anger that is present in culture all around us. It seems as though people are angry about almost everything. People are angry about matters of race and gender and sexuality. People are angry about COVID, about the government, about freedom or the perceived lack of freedom. The art of two-way nuanced dialogue has completely been replaced by shouting and name-calling in our culture. No one wants to be the first to listen, and so absolutely no one is listening. The world in which we live is shaking, and in some cases it feels like it's on fire, and the church, we find ourselves right in the middle of all of this mess. And so people of God, what are we to do? At times such as these, the church throughout history has offered but one response. When the church doesn't know what to do, we look to Jesus, we listen to Jesus, and we commit to follow Jesus wherever he goes. That's our mandate in the world. In Revelation chapter 1, we have a first-hand, a first-hand account of John, one of Jesus' original 12 disciples. He had been exiled to the island of Patmos because of the things he was saying about Jesus being Lord of all. And the Roman Empire saw John as a threat and they took him off to an island and they dumped him there to die. And one Sunday, while John was praying, he heard a voice speaking to him. And the text tells us that John turned to see the voice and this is what he saw. Someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet with a golden sash around his chest. The hair on his head was white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were blazing like fire. His feet were like bronze, glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand, he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp, double-edged sword. His face was like the sun, shining in all its brilliance. And John says, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I'm the living one. I was dead, and now look, I'm alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and Hades. What John saw was a vision of the ascended, glorified Jesus. The same Jesus who is our high priest, who even now is interceding before the Father on our behalf. Jesus, the one through whom everything has been created. Jesus, the one who is sovereign over everyone and everything. This description I read for you in, in, in chapter one, it mentions seven characteristics of Jesus. His hair, his eyes, his feet, his voice, his hand, his mouth, his face. And at the center of these seven descriptors, number four of the seven is the voice. And I don't believe this placement to be arbitrary. The basic act of Christian discipleship is to listen to the voice of Jesus. And the vision that John saw matched the voice that he heard. We're told that 
Jesus' voice was like the sound of rushing waters. If you've ever stood at the ocean as waves crash, or you've stood at the bottom of a waterfall, you don't just hear it, you feel it in your body. And this vision and this voice matched for John, and he did the only thing that made any sense in that moment. He fell on his face. And Jesus spoke to him and said, don't be afraid. If we had been there, we would have been on our faces. In fact, if Jesus wasn't so wonderful, he would be terrifying. But all that Jesus is, glorious, powerful, wise, all of this, he is for us because he loves us so much. There's a well-known African-American preacher by the name of Tom Skinner, and he grew up in Harlem in the 1960s at a time of incredible racial tension with many, many people opposing the civil rights movement. It was at that moment that Tom came to faith in Christ. Now, as a child, he had attended Sunday school, but there in Sunday school, he was presented with very nuanced pictures of Jesus. And Tom writes, I looked at these pictures, Jesus with his perfectly coiffed hair, his white, soft face, and I knew that Jesus would not last 10 minutes in my neighborhood. As a teenager, as Tom looked at the world around him in Harlem, he asked his father, where's God in all of this? I couldn't see, for the life of me, see how God, if he cared for humanity at all, could allow the conditions which existed in Harlem. And it wasn't until the age of 17 that, that Tom met the real Jesus. Not the blonde hair, blue-eyed Jesus, not the meek and mild Jesus, but the glorious, wise, powerful Jesus. The one who stands in the midst of suffering with eyes blazing like fire and a double-edged sword. Tom goes on to say, I knew that this Jesus could be at home in my neighborhood. And it strikes me that our need today isn't all that different from Tom's. We all need a Jesus who can be at home in the mess of our world and in the mess of our lives. Now, you and I, we may need to upgrade our vision of Jesus, but he is sufficient for every decision, every circumstance, every obstacle, even every wound that we bear in our body. The question for you, VAC, is where do you need the wisdom and the strength and the healing of Jesus today? It's not an easy time to be a Christian in Canada. I would suggest to you that Christi Christians' approval rating in society is at an all-time low. Many of us feel marginalized, socially, politically, culturally. But no matter how marginalized Christians or the church becomes, Jesus cannot be removed from the center. Jesus is at the center of everything, all of the time everywhere. And at times such as these, we stand with the church past and present. We stand with the church below, here, and above that great cloud of witnesses, and together we resolve, we commit that we will look to Jesus, we will listen to Jesus, and we will follow wherever he goes. We say with the apostle Peter, Lord, to whom else could we go? You're the only one who have the words of life. So every time the church gathers, we remind ourselves that Jesus is at the center of our world, of our country, of the city, of this church, of our families, of our lives. And because all of this is true, we worship. If, if the basic act of Christian discipleship is to listen to Jesus' voice, then the basic response upon hearing the voice is worship. We sing, we proclaim we follow. In the words of legendary, and I do mean legendary, Christian and Missionary Alliance theologian, I worship Christ, the coming King. My life is His alone. Holy set apart, I sing His song. By the power of Jesus, I am healed. He is my only hope. Saved and sanctified, I sing a song. Now, these words were penned by your very own. John Buller, and set to music. Jesus, the Savior, the Sanctifier, the Healer and Coming King. He's all of these things, and he's so much more. He's sufficient for every need we have and will ever have. And the great news is that he's right here 
in our midst today. And VAC, I just want to encourage you, turn to him. Listen to him. Receive from him. I'm going to invite John and the band to come on up. They're going to lead us in a, a few more songs of worship. As they come, please bow your head with me as I pray. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are the beautiful, magnificent, powerful, loving God. And so it's our joy to turn our hearts to you. And we choose in this moment to trust you in the middle of all of our mess. You know the way through. You know what we need. And so we hold out our hands and we just ask for your generosity. Particularly, Lord, it's on my heart to pray for those who are here today and they're bearing some kind of wound. It may be in their physical body. It may be in a key relationship. It may be a memory from the past that's just keeping them chained. Even now, Jesus, come in your power, in your love, and heal us, reconcile us, free us, that we might worship, that we might live boldly in this world. You're the one we look to. You're the one we need. You're the one that we want to worship. And so, Father, Son, and Spirit, we offer all of these things to you even now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Mark. I, uh, last night when you said legendary theologian, I was so excited to hear, like, the quote and who said it, and then it was like, Wait a second. <laughs> and so that was kind of fun again for the second time this morning. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, well, thank you. Um, I, there's, another, there's another author I was just reminded of this morning. I was thinking about it. Um, his name is Malcolm Muggeridge, and he says this. It's kind of, I think, worth, worth sharing. Every happening, great and small, is a parable whereby God speaks to us. Every happening, great and small, is a parable whereby God speaks to us, and the art of life is to get the message. Isn't that cool? And so just in response to what you said about, like, listen, like, let's listen, let's pay attention. What is God trying to teach us? And in, in my life, sometimes that's been just being aware that there's the push-pull, and when he just wants me to turn and, and orient myself to him, I for some reason I run away and maybe you can identify uh, with that. Um, so this is just maybe a song to help us respond to what we've um, heard this morning and um, it's actually on Spotify now so you could, everybody get out your phones right now. No, just kidding. Um, but anyway, yeah, we, we recorded it and released it and um, it's a really, it's a meaningful song for me. I didn't write it um, but I really wanted to um, to uh, do my own my own creative uh, bit with it so this is called running <laughs>
Let's stand up together and let's continue to respond in worship and um, let's see. Let's try this. But first. There we go. Uh, you are the one who created the sea. Yeah, you sing over me and I'm thankful. All of creation, it joins in the song and the saints sing along. We are thankful. Try it. You are the one who created the seas. Yeah, you sing over me and I'm thankful. All of creation, it joins in the song and the saints sing along. We are Thankful. All right, here we go. Victories are multiplied, sorrows divide, and I'm thankful. My sacrifice to you. In the spirit, true. You are the one who created the seas, and you sing over me.
As we sing, as we worship, as we do what we're created to do. Yes, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Bless your people. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope. Sing it. that we would humbly come before you 
in worship, in love for our fellow man and woman. God, as you fill us with your life, may we reflect your life to each other and to our, our community and our valley and our world. Pour out our praise and you pour out. As we pour out our praise, you pour out your spirit, Lord. As we pour out our praise, you pour out your spirit on us, God. As we pour out our praise, pour out your Holy Spirit. And Spirit, we say you are welcome do what you want to do in our midst. Give us great faith to see that, to pay attention to that, to listen to that. Listen for your voice, Spirit. We will listen for your voice. We'll sing. <laughs> we'll sing our hearts out. Uh, we'll sing our hearts out to you. one to whom we've been singing is present in our midst. Jesus is here. And if you've come to church and there's been a burden on your heart, maybe something you've been carrying and praying about in silence, I want to let you know that the, the prayer ministry team here at Vernal Alliance would just love to put a hand on your shoulder and stand with you in lifting your burden before the Father. He's the one who's gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, and abounding in love. So at the conclusion of the service, come on down to the front. The prayer team will find you they'd love to pray for you. And now as the service concludes, I just want to speak one final word of blessing. And if you're willing, just let me invite you to extend your hands to receive. May the love of God the Father and the peace of Christ the Son and the joy of the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love.
Amen and amen. The Lord bless you. May stay on my lips to live what I speak until your kingdom.